I want to talk today about portobello mushrooms. These big ginormous shrooms are actually quite tasty. If you've never tried them, they're super good to have as a meat alternative if you're like, oh, I just want to lighten it up a little bit. They're super, super delicious, very flavorful. Notice there's only one because I'm the only one in my family who knows the joy of mushrooms. Maybe you disagree with me, but I love them. Scott's making a face. Good job. Um, so anyways, I want to just teach you how simple it can be to roast one of these up and then enjoy it as a side dish. You can slice it up. You could have it actually in place of a burger. Um, I'm going to have this because we're going to, we still have tomatoes. We're going to do some just tomatoes and basil and I still have burrata, but then I wanted a little something else to have with my food. So I'm going to roast up a marsh uh, marshmallow. <laughs> I'm going to roast up a mushroom. I'm going to show you how to do it. So sheet tray, I've talked about this, parchment paper, but you can just do it on in a glass baking dish. It doesn't have to be a sheet tray, but mushrooms are really porous. So they will soak up just about everything you put on them. So you can be pretty generous with your olive oil. And I usually start and I just get it nice and coated with my olive oil and some salt on there and pepper. And you want to do both sides for sure. A little more salt, a little more pepper. Okay, so I'm gonna roast this for about 20, 25 minutes or so on 400 degrees. And I start it um, actually capside down because it will release some of its liquid. Um, actually, excuse me, capside up, sorry. So um, the inside part is gonna be up and some of that liquid will pool and then I'm gonna flip it about halfway through cooking and then that rest of that liquid will kind of come out and then they just get nice and soft and super flavorful and I'll also hit it with a little bit of balsamic vinegar at the end, which gives it another level of flavor. So you could also add other spices, you know, thyme, dried thyme, dried oregano, garlic, whatever. I'm just keeping it really simple today, but I'll show you how it's done or how it looks like in just a little bit. Okay, so my mushroom has only been cooked for halfway. It's got the nice and juicy flavor. And what I'm gonna do is hit it with a little bit of, flip it around, balsamic vinegar. Whatever kind you have is fine. There's a variety of qualities, aging, they can be more syrupy, more liquidy. This is just the one that I happen to have. So I'll just hit it with a little bit of this, not a ton. And then with my tongs, I'll just kinda like soup it around and I'll flip it over and just a touch more on top here and I don't have my spreaders, but I'll just kind of spread it around for some good flavor distribution. And then this guy will go back into the oven for another 10 minutes and I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. Mushroom's done. So I'm gonna flip it over and you can see all the mess is contained on that parchment, which is awesome. So easy cleanup and it's just nice and tender and it's gonna be super delicious. And I'm gonna actually take it over and pop it onto my plate. Follow me. This is my yummy lunch right here. Roasted portobello, burrata, some of my heirloom tomatoes, the pesto I just made, yum. This right here, folks, is what I call delight of the bite. Little pesto, little tomato, little burrata, that delicious mushroom, all the things, all the yummy flavors, sweetness of the tomato, creamy cheese, um, kind of briny balsamic vinegar, salty, um, the pesto, I'll have a little bit of salt from that Parmesan cheese, and it's just Mm. delicious so many good flavors and a great alternative to crackers if you're watching gluten or you can't have that have your um mushroom be your base mm. so many flavors it's so good give this a try